Part 2 My 13-year-old nephew met my wife for the first time and said, I've seen you before. She froze, and what happened next left me shaken. We spent the next half hour excitedly talking about Tony's new school. I learned that Tony would have little time off. But now that my wife and I were both working, we couldn't just take time off to go meet him. And when Tony was at school, he wasn't allowed to use electronics for long periods. Tony was fine with that because the school had so many extracurricular activities that kept him busy and tired. By the end of the day, I was excited for him to experience new things. When my wife came back from her run, I told her about the call. Once again, she was disappointed that she had missed the chance to meet Tony, but she felt better knowing that I was ready to introduce them. She didn't mind waiting because she knew I wasn't purposely keeping her away from the most important person in my life. A few months later, while visiting my family for Thanksgiving, my wife decided to propose to me. I couldn't have imagined a better moment for her to do it. She knew how much I wanted my family to be there for my big moments. I said yes with the biggest smile on my face and tears streaming down my cheeks. We got married the following year. Tony, of course, heard the news and sent me a text congratulating me. My wife and I spent the next year meticulously planning our wedding. We wanted everything to be perfect. Since Tony was still in school, there was no way for him to attend the wedding. I was devastated that he couldn't make it, but I knew his education was more important than an event like a wedding. Plus, my wife comforted me by saying we could have a small ceremony after Tony graduates to replicate our wedding. The wedding was a grand affair. Everyone laughed and cried, and I felt like the luckiest man alive. The love and support I received that day were beyond anything I could have imagined. I truly believed the rest of my life would be blissful because I got to spend it with my wife. And for the first year of our marriage, that was true. But then things started to go downhill. We both had stable 9-to-5 jobs, made good money, and lived comfortably. We never really wanted children, so that wasn't something we had to plan for. So it came as a surprise one night when we were lying in bed, and my wife asked if she could start working overtime. Babe, there's something I need to talk to you about, she said. What is it? I asked, a little concerned. I've been thinking about working overtime at work, my wife said one night as we lay in bed. Overtime? Why the sudden interest? I asked, surprised. I've been aiming for a promotion for a while now, and the extra money could help us, she explained. I love that you're passionate and ambitious, but we're already comfortable, I said. I know, but I think we can do even better, she replied. I love our time together, just relaxing after work and on weekends. That means a lot to me, I told her, hoping she'd understand. I value that too, but I see the potential for more, she said. It's not about potential, it's about quality of life. I want to enhance our quality of life through hard work, she insisted. I respect your choices, but I'm not happy with this decision. I'll admit it, I said. I'm doing what's best for both of us, my wife said, then turned over and turned off the light after wishing me good night. I was left awake with my thoughts, feeling upset that she had made this decision without really discussing it with me. We didn't need the extra money. We were both able to save a good amount each month. We had made smart investments, had our retirement funds set up, and lived comfortably, so I didn't understand why she felt the need to work more. But I figured that if my wife was happy, I would be happy too. The next few months were torture for me. My wife started